I'm James Farrer. I'm the Interim Director of Transition for the York and North Yorkshire Combined Authority. And if, if we can talk, just wind the clock back a bit, because I know we're sort of partway sort of through a process at the moment of devolution and, you know, there's lots of terms that get used. Yeah. Um, what, what is the Combined Authority? So, if effectively, the Combined Authority is City of York and North Yorkshire Councils um, working together um, with a uh, newly elected mayor um, to lead it up to create additional ambition for the region and importantly bring a, a additional investment in to deliver that. I think it's really important to note that it isn't taking over the roles of City of York and North Yorkshire Council. What it is, is it's providing that strategic ambition and actually its purpose is to bring new investment and new growth into the region. And that's, that's part of a process because I, I think many will be aware that we've, we've gone from a number of borough councils yeah. through to, well, two councils, haven't we? And, yeah. uh, York and uh, North Yorkshire Council. That's right. Could you just explain a bit about how that fits in with the process? Yeah, so, so when we first expressed an interest in devolution, um, we had seven borough and district councils, a county council, and then the city of York, which was a unitary. Uh, and what government um, said was that actually, if we wanted to bring in the mayor and the, the, all the ambition and investment that comes with the mayor, then we needed to go to a unitary council in North Yorkshire. So that meant the county council and the seven um, districts and boroughs coming together. The agreed model was to do, do that at a North Yorkshire level. So we now have a single unitary council at a North Yorkshire level and a single unitary council at a City of York level. And what the mayor will then do is sit alongside those two councils with a very much a focus on two things. Firstly, stimulating economic growth and bringing in the investment to deliver that growth, but then also taking over the role of the Police, Fire and Crime Commissioner. Uh, so that will sit under the mayor and the combined authority as well. So the process was first of all to bring the seven districts in the county into one. Once we'd created those two, which happened in April this, uh, this year, we can now move to the next step, which is creating the combined authority and then electing the mayor, uh, the mayor in May next year. And at, at the moment we've got, there's a number of candidates, some, you know, well, one independent, and I think we've got two parties that have, yeah. um, that have uh, called their, their candidate. Um, I think there's a tendency then to focus on almost like the tasks of the mayor rather yeah. than the bigger picture. Um, and also, I feel like you've mentioned in the past, like the, the, the funding that they directly manage yeah. is, is not really the whole picture of what they do. And this, uh, this other phrase that gets used is that it gives us a voice in Westminster in London. Yeah. How, does, how does that work? Yeah, so I think there's a, a, a number of factors there. So, so first, let's pick up the, the, the voice in, in Westminster. Um, what, what you find is that the first phone call that ministers make when they're looking at developing policy in Westminster is to the mayor. So currently you've got the mayor in Manchester, in West Midlands, in West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire. Uh, so that, so the, there's 10, 10 mayors uh, currently in the, in the country and, and they, they have the voice of ministers. So, the, so when they're looking to influence government investment, they've got that direct line into it. The rest of us then scrap for whatever's left in, 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 in real terms. What being a mayor will do is put us around that top table with those, with those other mayors for the, for the core cities. So we will also have the ear of ministers. So, so as a region like York and North Yorkshire, which doesn't have a core city, it will give us a much greater influence in, in Westminster and Whitehall to, to influence their national policy around what, they, what they're looking to do. Obviously, what also then comes with the, the mayor is the investment that comes with it. Uh, and obviously, the, the profile figure is £18 million a year for 30 years. Um, so that adds up to £540 million, which is not insignificant in its own right. But actually, if you were to take the LEP as an example, so I, I also run the York and North Yorkshire Local Enterprise Partnership, every pound we've spent has realised around £9 of private sector investment. So if you apply that same model, that £18 million a year is going to um, potentially produce, if we, if we replicate that, that would be £162 million, £2 million of benefit a, a year. So it actually it's about how you can leverage it, how, how the mayor will come in with a manifesto and how they can use that investment pot that they've got to leverage an additional benefit and additional investment from the private sector. So I think that's a really important role around what they do. I think the other thing what the mayor will do is, is have that strategic overview. So it has a statutory responsibility around transport and adult education. So this will be taking, uh, uh, we're looking at a region wide approach to both these areas and making sure that when we're investing in our transport systems, when we're uh, investing in, in skills, particularly adult skills, it's, it's a strategic approach. So we're doing the investments that will benefit York and North Yorkshire. And these aren't decisions that are being made by somebody who sits in London and doesn't really understand the patch. 
but actually the investment priorities are going to be decided in York and North Yorkshire by people who understand the patch and most Im importantly they understand the opportunities so they're able to make those investments which will maximise the benefit and the investment that we can leverage on the back of it. And I think that kind of leads into I think myself included didn't quite understand how the combined authority works with the existing yeah. county council particularly on something like transport yes and I think what you're saying there is then is that the um, the combined authority and the mayor is very much I suppose the strategy side of transport county council is still very much the um, the execution the potholes and is the is the mayor looking for the bigger wins? Yeah, I think I think that, that's absolutely right. So I, I look at this in, in terms of, of, of buckets, if you like, and, and the first bucket is is maintaining our elders and filling the potholes in, and that's absolutely the responsibility of North Yorkshire Council and City of York Council. So so that doesn't change. So the money will come through the mayor, but actually it'll wash straight through, and actually it's the responsibility of those to fill to fill those potholes in. There will then be a range of, of small scale improvements. These might be junction improvements or tweaks, and again North Yorkshire and York Council will lead on that. Um, the mayor will manage the money. And, and fund them, but it'll be, it'll be led on by York and North Yorkshire. The real value the mayor can, uh, will bring is looking at the strategic improvements, looking at the, the big strategic connections across the patch and how we can then make the business case to attract the new investments in to make those happening. So that's very much about connecting our communica uh, communities to new um, employment growth. It's about looking where there's major uh, kind of transport issues. So York, York Wing Road would be a good example around that. But it's the big strategic things where we will make the business case to secure the new investment from government to make those big kind of step change improvements that we want to see in the patch. And does that link us back to the having a voice down in London? Absolutely so, right. Yeah. Absolutely right. The, the mayor will be able to invest and build those business cases, create the evidence base, engage locally to do that. But then really importantly, the mayor will have that direct line into London to be able to negotiate to hopefully deliver that investment in the future. And talking about policing and the fire yeah. service, obviously that's a, that's a major change, isn't it? We're going to have a mayor, but they typically appoint a deputy mayor, don't they, yes. to act as the... That's right. Police and fire commissioner. Are there kind of roles and responsibilities then, sort of broadly similar to the um, the crime commissioner at the moment? Exactly the same. So, in, in effectively, uh, uh, there's currently a separate role, which is the police, fire, and crime commissioner. Those that set of responsibilities that come with that role sit under the mayor. And typically, what the mayor does is appoint a deputy who takes up those roles. So, in effect, it's exactly the same responsibilities. It's about working with the police service mm -hmm. and the fire service and holding them to account. Um, for the improvements and their delivery, but that's absolutely the role of the, the that sits under the mayor as we move forward. But, but I suppose it's sort of subtly different is that with the current system, the crime commissioner, if you like, doesn't have a mayor to report to. No. So I suppose the new commissioner has the the mayor immediately. Absolutely. Right. Them to yeah, so, so in, in real terms, what, what you're looking for the mayor to do is the mayor will be, have the big strategic vision for the region, both across place and the safety of our communities. So looking at the economy and the safety of our communities, the mayor will, will hold that big kind of strategic vision. Obviously, you've got the economic side of it then, which is making the investments in transport and housing and skills to drive the economic growth and opportunities. Um, but then you've got the police, fire and crime. So deputy mayor will be responsible for that, which will then really drive those improvements and the safety of our communities. And we, we know now that, I think it was a few weeks ago, wasn't it? They, they, they said we're going to have a vote at the start yep. of May. Yep. So that put like a, a stick in the ground, really, yep. isn't it? Where, where we're going. Um, so at the moment, it's down in Westminster, isn't it? It for, is. What, what's the right term? Is it, a, is it called a, an instrument? Is it it is. So it's, it's technically called a statutory instrument, but actually, what. what the, the language is that the minister has laid an order before parliament so if, if you think about what's happening here where there's going to be tens of millions hundreds of millions of pounds devolved to the region it's absolutely absolutely appropriate that the right amount of due diligence and checks and balances are put in place to make sure that money will be managed correctly now we've gone through a public consultation we've created a scheme which outlined how we will manage it that's been assessed by government and that's then been created into this legal instrument this statutory instrument that it's called and that's currently being debated by um, um, House of Parliament and, and the House of Lords. Um, 
sorry, House of Commons and House of Lords. Um, yeah. Once that's been debated, um, that will be signed off by the Minister and that then allows us to legally create the combined authority. Um, that combined authority will hopefully be created in January and that will then allow us to prepare that ready for when the Mayor is elected in May. So the Mayor will come in in May and they will have the combined authority already created so that they can hit the ground running and really start making investments and start making a real difference to our communities. And just to finish off, this is a, it's obviously a very massive change for Absolutely. the county. What would your message be to the public? And, and for many, let's be honest, it can be a bit dull, can't it? You know, and, but it's so important for the county and not just for the county, for individuals' yeah. daily life, potentially. What would you say to people about paying a little bit of attention to this process and what's going on? This, this is a unique opportunity that we've never before had in York and North Yorkshire. Uh, and it's the public who will vote and decide who the mayor is going to be. So absolutely, it's really important that people do engage and they get out and vote. If you think about the responsibilities of the mayor, the, the, the mayor will be responsible for bringing the investment in and then making those investments to, to provide strategic improvements to our communities, to our road services, to how skills are delivered, to how the Police, Fire and Crime Commission is, is kind of managed across the region. So these are things that affect people's everyday lives. It's about how people feel safe in their communities, it's about how young people and, and, and the workforce get new opportunities, and it's about how our businesses can grow and create wealth and prosperity. So, so actually these are are things that will make a real difference to people's lives for generations to come um, and it's your opportunity to shape and decide who that mayor will be um, I'm not there to decide on that my job is to implement what the mayor's wishes are um, but we will have um, candidates who are out there with a manifesto the manifesto will set out what their priorities are um, I would say to people do engage with it look at your region look at where you think the improvements need to be made uh, and have a vote um, because what we really need is we need, we need a mayor who will provide that leadership for the region so that we can really drive forward, make a step change in, in, in how we are, make, make York and North Yorkshire the most prosperous area in the country, make it so it's got the safest communities in the country and make it the best place to do business in the country. And we need the right mayor to be able to lead that process. James, thank you very much. Thank you.